are designed to help us reflect a variety of different time periods and areas from around the world, and we're going to explore them quite extensively. Do not attempt to escape. Move forward immediately, or we will blast you. Blast us? No, no, see, we're on a tour today, so if you excuse us, we'll just go right by you. Don't get up. Oh, dear, I think he means business, folks. He wants us to go inside. This okay, we're going, we're going. Oh, yes, it seems that we're being captured by this alien spacecraft. It's only detailed in the front. That's what we use it for. Once an actor walks inside this house, well, we cut. That's all we can use it for because, well, there is a house with all rooms inside and intact. Hi, I'm David Hasselhoff, and welcome to Universal Studios. I'm here at Universal's Preview Center to give you a brief glimpse of what you'll be seeing when your tram takes you into the heart of the production studio. You know, by visiting Universal Studios, you are participating in a tradition that goes back over 70 years. In 1915, when Carl Lemley started Universal, he was convinced that motion pictures had a big future. He enjoyed watching people make... Each movement, very small movement, and then weeks and thousands of frames later, he would play back the film at normal speed, and the result was astounding. The same technique, our stage can only hold 50 feet of it. The greatest effect came when a Japanese submarine blasted the Ferris wheel. It is often too expensive to transport a cast and a crew to a faraway location. Perhaps the location no longer exists, or maybe it never existed at all. Such obstacles never stood in the way of imaginative filmmakers. They simply... 42, what a fan. Isn't that great? We always get the best volunteers for this. Okay, what we do for this is use a process that's called chroma key. Now, it's also referred to around town as blue screen. Behind the actress, they put a blue screen like this, see? Now, the camera on the floor down here, it's programmed to automatically eliminate the color blue. On the left, you see what the camera sees. On the right, you see what the camera does. Let's put it together in the center to look like this. You now we can replace the blue with any background that we want to put behind the actors. Corey, how about a big wave out to everybody? Big, big wave, big smile. Say, hi, I'm flying. See yourself on TV? That's you. That's you. Look at it. Wave to these people over here to your left. Say, hi, I'm flying. Pretty neat, huh? Having a good time? 
It's over. Our Johnson kicks the door, I'll kick our door. And then when they go across the floor, I'll re recapture their steps down here. Now, when they go crashing through the glass, Universal Studios has allowed me to leave this choice up to you. I can either take this rock, this little granite rock, and throw it through the candy glass over here, or I can take my somewhat frail body and toss it through the candy glass over there. So now we're going to take a vote. All of those in favor for the rock, say aye. <laughs> All of those in favor of my body? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're a vicious groove. Well, okay, I'll take my body and use it to throw the rock. <laughs> Here we go. Now remember, this one has to be dangerous. It's like they're really trying to be quiet, aren't they? So we'll be little feet. I feel as silly as I look, believe me. effects using television, video, and computer equipment so we can make motion pictures about, well, these. American engineer Cornell, no spacewalking experience whatsoever. She's really scared about doing this. What we're going to do is combine both of our actors with background footage and scenes in the motion picture to put together our own spacewalk, just like you saw in the motion picture. So here's how it works. Our two astronauts have just arrived aboard the Russian spaceship Leonov. They've established orbit around the planet Jupiter where some very strange things are happening. Their mission is to leave the land off and head toward another spaceship in the area called the Discovery. Along the way, there's a few obstacles that are about to befall them. So watch the live actors up ahead in front of this blue screen here and watch them also on the monitors down below as we put it all together for you. Orbit established. Prepare to engage mission. Colonel Brolovsky, come in. Colonel, are you ready? I... I don't think I want to go through with this. You don't have any choice. Stand by. I'm engaging the doors. Oh, <laughs> 
Jackson gave him the third pencil for his large piece of antique furniture, a sculpture, an oil painting, or a mighty fixture. We use props to help us depict the historical era. They also help create a look, a mood, or a feel in a set decorated for TV, motion pictures, and the live stage. Just about anything that the writers can come up with can be brought to life here for use on the screen. And uh, we have a number of different departments within the technical building. The dining here is indeed for Universal. We are the biggest movie studio in the world, 420 acres. We have the most different locations to choose from for other studios and production companies to come and film their own projects. Now, what we're going to do here is begin to explore our fascinating back lot. It contains over 500 different facades used for outdoor filming. Remember that facade means false front. These are not real buildings, and there's nothing behind the fronts of them. These buildings are constructed out of wood, foam rubber, fiberglass, and chicken wire primarily, so we can change them, altering the architecture to help us reflect various time periods, changing them from businesses to apartment buildings, from stores to restaurants, we are constantly redesigning and repainting the same structures for use again and again in different projects. Because the sets can help us reflect a, a mood or an era. And not only is the way the buildings are constructed, but what kind of is old Chicago in the sting. Paul Newman, Robert Redford, Robert Shaw, this 1973's Best Picture Academy Award winner. Even this particular street called New York Street that we're on right now was also used to represent what old Chicago may have looked like uh, for the making of that motion picture. If you saw the Women of Brewster Place, the miniseries on a couple weeks ago, Oprah Winfrey, Cicely Tyson, Robert Gibbons, these are the neighborhoods of Brewster Place captured. Uh, they filmed it last summer and it came out uh, a couple weeks ago. Picture cars driving around and extras in costume walking in and out and up and down the streets, all choreographed so it looks like an actual city come to life. One of the sets that doesn't get changed hardly at all is this movie theater on my side and stairways. So we can film props or actors just inside the windows, but nothing beyond that. They're, the room that you would see would be constructed and filmed within sound stages on the front lot, but just inside the windows you could film somebody uh, turning into a restaurant or something, put a table right there, or actors walking in. Now we can do that on all levels. The stairways go up to the second floor and the third floor windows. Now. You may have noticed that these are all about the same height. There are, there are over how these sets appear and who's on the set and doing what. See, if we went to New York and blocked off the street of New York, we would actually have to block it off, reroute traffic, and have, try to control. But inside the soundstage, all the
to hang out on this bridge because it's been around for about 80 years and we haven't done a lick of maintenance on it, a nail, a drop of oil, nothing. But we're only going to go across for one quick second. So be sure you have your cameras ready. You might want to hold on to your blue sea cushion though, and it'll float if you don't, if we have any problems. But anyway, oh yeah, this is, I like it up here. Look, you can see the lights, you can see the sets at different angles. Great picture here. Right on up. We only gonna stay up here for a second. It's really starting creaky. Anyway. Oh! <laughs> oh, it looks like it's finally giving away. The bridge is collapsing. We're on top. Let's ease off very gently, folks. Very, very quietly. Very slowly. Very take it down. She wrote a Columbo because the director uses only one camera and the action or the scene is performed again and again. We move the camera around for different angles. So we collapse the bridge, move our cameras, the bridge resets, and then we collapse it again. Move the cameras, reset the bridge, collapse it again. So when you see this, go Seattle. W.C. Fields and Mae West way back in 1940. And this area we've just come into is what we call Six Points, Texas. It's called that because you'll notice that there are six streets that converge in this central area. Now back in our glorious western days, we used to shoot up to six films at a time. They would do that because the films were silent. So the, the sound from town will change those hitching posts to parking meters, put up a couple of cars, and suddenly we've got a town in the Midwest. That building up ahead of us with the large gray door is our 747 set where we have an actual mock-up of the 747 jet. That's where airport and many of the sequels to airport were filmed. It's also where many of our airline commercials are done. We're rounding the corner onto our prop graveyard right now. Those props were used in the movie MacArthur starring Gregory Peck. We're rounding the back of our riverboat facade, which was made originally from Mississippi Gambler, starring Tyrone Power. And that riverboat facade sits on the entire Pacific Ocean, as seen in McHale Navy, starring Ernest Borgnine and Tim Conway. Now, Ernie 
Jimmy and Timmy were a couple of rather wild characters and legends have it that they might have left a couple of minds around. So be watching out for them. <laughs> Jay, Jay, what is the trouble with these bridges today? We are just having so many problems with all these bridges, collapsing ones, King Kong, I don't know. I guess we're going to have to do what Charlton Heston did in the Ten Commandments. What did he do? Remember, folks, he got up as Moses, he stood on a rock, lifted up his right arm and his staff, and said, part the waters. Remember this area. If you look over on Jake Jungle for the original Tarzan, the silent picture, yes, you could just see Elmo Lincoln swinging through those trees. It looked a whole lot larger on your TV, on your film screen, didn't it? They put up those A-frames right here and covered them with some trees, and it created the illusion of a much larger area. rounding the corner on what we like to call Park Avenue. Now, if we dressed up these facades, put out a couple of limousines, put out some livery men in, in dress, and put up really beautiful curtains and that sort of thing, we can turn this whole area into a very exclusive and Kirk Douglas. And if you saw that movie where that American flag is hanging, that is where Lord Lawrence Olivier addressed the Roman soldiers right from that point. Since then, Mel Brooks has used this area, David Holmes has used this area for many American embassy scenes and that sort of thing. And here we are in Little Europe. Take a look around some folks. You can envision Frankenstein lurking in the doorways and Bella Lugosi is Frankenstein lurking around that corner there. Blind. Also, if you're a Moonlighting fan, this very court is where Sybil Shepherd and Bruce Willis did that one Emmy Award winning episode where they did a takeoff on The Taming of the Shrew. Look around you now, that little hut with the double doors is where Boris Karloff as Frankenstein approached the blind man who was kind enough to help him. Of course, he couldn't see the horror that Jack Pierce's makeup created. Coming up on what we call a hot set. It's a closed set, but we're going to be allowed into it for just a few minutes. So we'll get some various angles. You can create the different scenes. People coming around in the stair. They've got their coffee out. They must be coming back pretty soon.
the Old West. From San Francisco to the Old West, where else but in Hollywood? A lot of old Western television shows were done here as well as many of the movies. Shows like Laramie, The Virginian, Alias Smith and Company, and like to be done. But notice the doorways as we pass them. On my side of the tram, they're a little bit smaller and narrower than usual. But on JJ's side of the tram, well, son of a gun, those doors are larger and wider than normal. Well, guess why? They used to put the cowboys in front of the smaller doors to make them appear big and brawny. And they put the ladies in front of the larger doors to make them look small and petite. I've been dying to get my photos down here. And you'll want to notice this barn over here on my side of the tram. That's where Francis and the Talking Mule was filmed. That's the home where Francis lived. You ever wonder how they get a mule to talk? They put peanut butter on the roof of its mouth and that poor mule has to sit there and look it off. And then they dub in the voice of Chill Will. And there's Paul Bunyan in his blue ox bay from the great outdoors. Abbey Island! JJ, no! Oh no, folks. I've heard that sharks infest these waters. On your side there. Sir? Over your side here. Hello, sir. Excuse me. You? Mom, Pardon me, sir. Didn't you read the sign? Hello, sir. There have been sharks spotted in this water. Maybe we should all yell at him. What do you think? Hey! Hey, hey! Oh, no. Welby, M.D. moved in. Starring Dan 
Freud and John Candy. The whole area, though, with the waterfall was recently seen in some episodes of Almost Grown, starring Timothy Daly and Eve Gordon. It's also been used in Murder, She Wrote. Right there. And make sure as we're going through that you stay very, very quiet because it doesn't want to be too stable, right? So stay very quiet. But if you get a little bit too scared, just close your eyes, okay?
will not save you now. I have the dragon's eye, and there is no power on earth that can stand before me. Gaze upon your death, barbarian! From death I call my warriors of the war of the living. continue a story like you see on your TV. We move around to a lot of different locations. And as you can see by our exotic set, we've taken our cast and crew to a Caribbean island down off the Florida Keys. Now the storyline calls for Crockett and Tubbs, our two Miami Vice heroes, to follow up on a lead that brings them right here. To the hideout of a Caribbean crime boss and his band of sleazy smugglers. <laughs> no, wait, wait, hold don't encourage them. I meant sleazy, ugly smugglers. Hey, 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 hey. Now, you can probably guess, this whole place is a powder keg waiting to blow. So, keep your cameras focused on that little shed right over there. It's booby-trapped with explosives just waiting for someone to open the door. 
All right, guys, got you in your places? Looks like we're just about ready to start shooting. Whoa, whoa, whoa hold it, Dave. Wait, what are you doing? I'm throwing you up there, Hop! <clears throat> Pat, it's okay. Shut Chill out. <laughs> well, folks, that's Dave up in the booth, and he does all of our special effects for us. David, you're obviously ready to get going, so how about some atmosphere for our next scene? A little smoke from the factory's looking great. All right, Dave, stand by. Now, as you all just saw a moment ago, our stunt doubles for Crockett and Tubbs have managed to ruffle a few feathers here in Flamingo Land. And in this next scene, they move in to collect some hard, hard evidence. But our sleazy smugglers have other ideas. Something like a dynamite surprise party. All right, guys, stand by. Cameras are ready. And action! Not much. Not for very long, eh? 